everybody. Welcome to my channel here at Naive Melody Front Yard Farm. Today, we're gonna to be working with my Savoy cabbage that I grew, I started it this spring. If you're new to my channel, thanks for coming to hang out with me. And if you like these videos and you wanna see more gardening, preserving, and cooking videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So let's get to it. So this is my Savoy cabbage. And you know, to be honest, I probably should have harvested it a while ago, but I just wasn't really sure what I was gonna do with it. Uh, red cabbage, green cabbage, I got that down. Savoy, this is my first time growing it. And I just didn't know how I was gonna cook it or what I was gonna do. So I'm gonna show you that today. So we're gonna go ahead, harvest this, which is gonna create a lot of room in this bed for all my new fall and winter veg. And then I'm gonna show you what I decided to do with this to use some of it up to cook for dinner and then to preserve it for later in the season. So here we go. Okay, so like I said, I probably let these go a little longer than I should have. It seems like they've started to open up a bit, but with any cabbage, it's ready to harvest once the heads are nice and firm. And I noticed about a week or two ago that they really had firmed up. And then today, when I came out here, I noticed these leaves are starting to open. So they definitely need to come out now. So I've got my handy tool. This is one of my favorite ones because it's got a serrated edge on the side and then a, um, like a flat edge and it's got a little weed picker. Anyways, it's amazing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to kind of hacksaw through this. And there we go. And then take off the icky leaves down at the bottom. Oh, I just noticed there are some aphids on here. I had that problem with my other cabbage. I was hoping they wouldn't spread over to these. It, I didn't see it before, but there are some on some of these bottom leaves. So I'm gonna get rid of those. I'm gonna feed them right to my chickens and not put them in my compost pile because I don't want them to hang out. Ugh, hopefully these are not totally all through here. Yeah, I don't see any more. And what I usually do with cabbage too is I let it soak in some water, sometimes even a little bit of salt water, uh, for at least an hour just to get any little bugs or slugs or anything out of those little crevices. Because you don't want those in your kitchen. So my plan for these, to use them tonight and preserve them, is I'm gonna chop some up and freeze it in freezer bags for soups and stews and like boiled dinner kind of later in the season. And then I'm hoping to do a coleslaw today and I'm gonna show you how I make my own dressing for that. It's super easy and it's way tastier than the bottled stuff. All right, sorry, I had somebody stop by my house and ask for directions. So I'm just gonna keep on, you know, harvesting these. Like I said, there are aphids on here. So that totally blows. That sucks, but chickens will be happy. Um, aphids have never really been a huge issue for me until this year. So I've been meaning to try to get some ladybugs. Also what you can do to really help control aphids in the long term is put worm castings in your beds and along the base of the plant. And that gives them the type of nutrients they need to fight off the aphids, aphids apparently. So I do have lots of that in my compost because I have worms in there. Ugh, gross. This is another reason not to let your plants go for too long. It's more likely for them to get pests. That looks okay. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely not put these in my compost. Um, I've heard sometimes you can just go ahead and burn them. I usually give them to my chickens because they'll eat them and it's far away from my garden and compost. and keep harvesting these and I'll show you what I do with them in the kitchen.
So I went ahead and kept three heads of cabbage. A couple of them were little and kind of opening up and then there was one that was so covered in aphids. I was just like, all right, screw that uh, chicken food. So that's not too bad. I got three. My red cabbage, I really only had one head that was still okay without the aphids on it. So that's a huge bummer, but that's what happens in the garden. You just never know how it's gonna go. Every year is different. Like I said, I've never really had an issue with aphids before. So I'm definitely gonna be picking up some ladybugs and then probably really focusing on making sure I have even more worm castings in my soil. That's the plan. And then these guys, oh, there's a little spider. Ooh, there, Ooh. all right. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go ahead and soak them in water. I'm going to put a good amount of salt in there too, just in case that helps kill off like little slugs and things like that. That's just kind of the reality of eating from your garden. There's going to be stuff in it sometimes. It's outside. Uh, so try not to get grossed out. <laughs> it's a little different than going to the grocery store because everything there has already been processed. And with the garden, you have to process it yourself. So you definitely get used to it. Uh, you just saw me freak out a little bit over a spider, but spiders used to terrify me. And now when they're outside, I'm fine with them. I know they're doing things like eating my aphids. Uh, you know, so as long as they're outside, they don't freak me out. You'll get used to it. But even with your veg from the grocery store, you don't know. You know, one time we found her, yeah, it was Colby's friend at Costco, found a frog a live frog in a bag of um, spinach. <laughs> so you just never know. But I'm gonna get these in water. I'm gonna let them soak for at least an hour, probably longer, because uh, I don't really have to do anything with these until later in the day when we're ready to eat dinner. So that's the plan, and then I will show you what I do with them. Hey guys, so my cabbage has been soaking for quite a while, like a few hours, because I just left it in the sink while we were doing family stuff. And the twins are down for a nap for a little bit longer, so I'm gonna try to get this prepped for dinner. Um, I went ahead and soaked it in salt water for quite a while, and then I drained that water, and it was a little dirty, you know. So I drained all of that and then filled it up with water again, and now the water's like totally clear, and it's been sitting there for a while. So they're nice and clean. So I'm gonna do a few things with them. I'm gonna make a coleslaw for dinner tonight. I'm gonna make the dressing and show you how to do that. And then we're gonna try some grilled cabbage steaks. We're doing like a honey balsamic glaze and then you just broil it in the oven. So we're gonna give that a try. I've never done that. But this cabbage is supposed to be really tender and sweet and yummy. It's a Savoy cabbage. So you can see, you probably saw it earlier, but it looks like really wrinkly, super pretty. Uh, so that's supposed to be really good for eating. So let's see. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start the coleslaw and get that kind of um, sitting. I also have some red cabbage left over from the garden. So I'm gonna start by just chopping that up a little finer. Um, originally we braised it with beet greens and that was really, really yummy. Uh, but for the coleslaw, I want them to be really fine. So I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm not gonna worry about them being like perfect strips. I'm just gonna like go for it. It's rustic, whatever. Um, I'm just make them smaller pieces so they're good for like a salad. Okay, so that's good enough. So I'm gonna throw that in my bowl. And then what you wanna do is you wanna sprinkle it generously with salt and then let it sit. That helps pull out the extra water. So we're gonna do that. And then I will start prepping the Savoy cabbage, do the same thing, and then I'll get started on my dressing. So these I'm gonna slice as thin as I can. You could use like a shredder and I even have one. That would be smart, but I'm not gonna worry about it. So I just went ahead and chopped the ends off 
and then cut it vertically like this. And then I'm just gonna slice it pretty thin. Okay, so I have my cabbage sitting with salt on it in the bowls, just kind of getting that extra water out. So next I'm gonna go ahead and make the dressing. And this is super easy. So uh, if you make your own mayonnaise, definitely use that. I don't have any made up right now, so I'm just using, you know, the regular stuff. And so you wanna use about a half cup or so, give or take, depending on how much, you know, lettuce you have. I just eyeball it and taste it as I go. So I'm doing, probably like three quarters of a cup. Actually, I'm gonna do a little more because I have quite a bit of lettuce. So I would say like about a cup or so. And then you can do where you take onions and you kind of slice them up really thin, soak them in lemon juice so they kind of macerate in there. I don't have any onions. I'm just gonna add some garlic. Again, I'm just winging it. So we like garlic in this house. So I pretty much add it to everything and I do a lot. <laughs> so I probably did about maybe like a tablespoon-ish of garlic. And then you're gonna wanna add your acid, so some lemon juice. It's also gonna thin the mayo out a little bit. But this tastes way better than the store-bought stuff for sure. And you can just kind of make it your own. You can do lots of different things with it. You can use lime instead. Um, I'm gonna be putting in parsley, but you can do it with like lime and cilantro. Uh, you can make a really bright cabbage slaw by using oil and red wine vinegar instead of the mayo, but I'm doing a creamy kind of Southern slaw style. And then, so we're gonna do a good amount of parsley. I just went and grabbed this from my garden and washed it off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and chop that pretty fine and add that. That'll make it really kind of herby and bright and super yummy. Okay, so that's all chopped up. So I'm gonna throw that in there. Mommy. Yeah? Oh, I what? Uh, um. to, to, wait, wait. Here. Oh my goodness. To algebra, we make math visual and fun. Oh, I well, thank you. I'm sure everybody loves that. Okay, so then we're just gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, I just add a little bit at first and taste it and then, you know, add more as I see fit. And then when you're doing this kind of Southern style, um, it's yummy to just put a little pinch of sugar in there too. So I'm just doing like a pinch because I don't do a lot of sugar uh, because of my surgery. I had gastric bypass surgery uh, about a year and a half ago. So I can't do any sugar. It makes me sick <laughs> and feel terrible. So then you just go ahead and whisk it up. And this is pretty thick, and so I can kind of tell already I'm gonna add more lemon to it. And I like mine pretty bright and acidic, so I tend to do a lot of lemon anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a spoon and go ahead and just taste that real quick. Mmm, that's good. I think, oh, that's actually really good. I think I might just add a little more lemon, just get all the juice out of this that I can, because I love lemon. Okay, so give another little taste. Yeah. That's perfect. So it ended up being like about a cup of mayo, juice of a lemon, pinch of salt, some pepper, however much garlic you want. 
and then a pinch of sugar. I'm gonna put a little bit more pepper in there and then call it good. And that's it. It's super, super duper easy. So I'm gonna let that sit while my um, cabbage is doing its thing with the salt. And so next I'm gonna go ahead and get the cabbage steaks ready. Okay, so next is the glaze for our cabbage steaks. And this also is really easy. This one's a honey balsamic glaze. And you can just kind of throw in whatever you want. But I'm gonna start with some uh, olive oil. Mm, I don't know, a few tablespoons, what have you. And then balsamic vinegar. We love balsamic vinegar in this house. So anytime we can add to stuff, we're all for it. Oops, my little thing came out. Oops. And then you do, so here's kind of what it looks like so far. I'm just winging it. And then you're gonna do a couple tablespoons of honey. Here we go. And I'm just gonna whisk that up. everything nice and mixed together and then that's it for that so now what's left to do is go ahead and get the cabbage steaks ready all right so I took off all the outer leaves to have just the head and these are just little bitty guys so we'll see how well they kind of stick together but what you want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tops off kind of expose this area here. I've got a little bit of brown leaves, but that's fine. Uh, but I'm gonna save the tops for all the pieces I'm gonna be freezing for later in the season. Okay, so then you just go ahead and do like half inch slices or so. Like I said, these are little, so we'll see how these stick together. And then I have a pan, this is a stoneware from Pampered Chef that I love. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put olive oil on the bottom. And then go ahead and start slicing these and trying to keep them together as best as I can. And then just go ahead and lay them on the pan. Some of the leaves are coming off, but that's okay. So there's my little itty bitty cabbage steaks. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and um, and brush on our glaze. And it's kind of thick from the honey, which is nice, so it should stick well. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it with this first and then dump her on there. Some of these leaves are falling off, but I'm just gonna leave them in here because they'll still cook and hopefully be really yummy. So now what you wanna do is just go ahead and sprinkle with some salt and pepper. Uh, I like this coarse salt. This is the one I have uh, for 
kind of putting on top of stuff when I'm mixing it into recipes. I use my fine pink Himalayan salt, but I like having kind of that extra crunch. So just doing some of that and then some fresh pepper. And that's it. So what you wanna do is you wanna set your oven to 400 degrees and then you just go ahead and leave them in there for about, I think I said about 25 to 30 minutes. Since these are little, I'll keep an eye on them. And once they look you know, pretty cooked down, you're good to go. Whoops, I almost forgot. So the other thing that we're adding to this is just a little bit of fresh thyme. So I got some in my garden and you're just gonna kinda of chop it up a little bit. Um, this is just from a little planter I had on my porch. It's a compact thyme plant, which I've never done before, but oh my gosh, they're the cutest tiny little things. They're just little like topiaries. So I have two of those. So I went and grabbed a couple sprigs and you're just gonna take those and then also kind of sprinkle a little bit on the heads. A lot of times we use thyme for steaks also. I do marinade, that's also real easy. It's just um, some olive oil, red wine, garlic, and then you put in quite a few sprigs of thyme and let that sit, you know, as long as you want, a few hours, a couple days, whatever, before you cook them. And oh my gosh, they're really good. Okay, so I've got the cabbage steaks ready to go for dinner. So I'll grill those up when we actually cook. We're gonna have some steaks and then some of the coleslaw. The coleslaw cabbage is still just kind of hanging out with the salt doing its thing and that's ready to mix up in a little while. So now I have all these leftover outer leaves and kind of the other chunks from the steaks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and save those for later in the year. So I just have a couple freezer bags and I'm just gonna chop them, you know, kind of big, take off the ends and keep them in bigger pieces so I can use them in other recipes. Uh, they're really good to just chop finely and add to soups and stews. The other thing I like doing uh, with cabbage is like a boiled dinner. That's something my mom always did when I was a kid. It's kind of like an Irish thing, I think. Uh, it's so easy. You do is you get kibasa, like sausage, uh, carrots, potatoes, and cabbage, and then you just boil it until it's all cooked. Um, I do it a lot of times in the Instant Pot, and that's really yummy too. So I'm keeping the pieces kind of bigger like this. The other recipe I saw when I was searching for things to do with Savoy cabbage that looked really good was a cabbage and potato gratin. So you just layer potatoes and cabbage and then sprinkle it with cheese on top, like a white cheese of some kind, and bake it. That looks delicious. So I think we're going to try that you know, this winter. And that's something really easy that you could even prep up beforehand and stick it in your freezer. So it's totally ready to go. But I'm just gonna go ahead and do this because this is what I have time for today. But that's the plan. So I'm gonna get that going and then I'll show you the finished product of how everything looks when it's done. Okay, so I wanted to show you how the cabbage turned out. So here is the coleslaw. And what I did is once it sat with the salt for a while, it softened it up quite a bit and I did have some extra water in there. So I just drained the water, mixed it up with the dressing and tried it and it's really good. The leaves are much more tender after doing the salt. And so it's really yummy. So boy cabbage was a great option for coleslaw. And then these are the cabbage steaks. There they are, and they smell awesome. So I'm really excited to try those because I've seen these on Pinterest a lot and we've just never done it. Uh, but they look really good. I'm excited, but they smell even better. And then what I did with the leftover leaves is these ones, I just, these were all the like little nubbins. I just went ahead and chopped them up kind of coarsely, but small like this. So I'm gonna have those in the freezer. So in the winter, I can just throw them in with soup and stuff, like do things in the crock pot, throw them in. These ones with the bigger leaves, 
I went ahead and chopped them kind of into these rectangular pieces. And that I'm gonna try that potato gratin. So I'm gonna slice potatoes and I have a bunch of those stored in my shed and then layer it with the cabbage and then put cheese in there also and bake it. That sounds amazing. Uh, another little trick, I don't have a vacuum packer, but I try to get all the air out of this for the freezer so they don't get as freezer burnt and they're easier to store. So what I did is I had the sink filled with water from soaking the cabbage and I put it all in the bag and then I submerged it in the water and you can see it got all the extra air out. Uh, and so you just keep, a, you know, it open on the top, let all that air escape and then seal it right then. And then there's a lot less air in it. So that's a quick little trick. So we're gonna go ahead and have dinner, but I wanted to show you how everything turned out and how I used all that Savoy cabbage that I got out of my garden. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. If you like these videos, please hit subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And I really appreciate you being here and hanging out with me today. Bye. Okay, so quick update. The cabbage steaks are super yummy. It's definitely a keeper. To algebra, we make math visual and fun. Wow. So, yeah. So anyways, I just wanted to let you know that it's definitely worth trying.